What's up, coders? What's good? Today we're going to be doing word ladder. So how about you climb on board? Ha! Get it? Like word ladder? Because you climb? Uh, never again, never again, never again, never again, never again. Welcome back. We're going to be doing Word Ladder today, and uh, I'm filled with energy. I'm doing this higher quality uh, version of this video now because I want to try it out and see how you guys like it. So here we go. Uh, my name is Nick White. I do tech and coding stuff on Twitch and YouTube. Check the description for all my information, and let's get into it. Word Ladder, medium problem, 2044 likes. Got a lot of likes. So let's just read it, and then I'll explain it more generally. So given two words, a beginning word and an ending word, so our method's going to take in two strings, begin word and end word, and then we also have a dictionary word list. So we have a bunch of other words, too. We're given a list of words, a beginning word, and an ending word. We're gonna. Uh, what we want to do is we want to find the length of the shortest transformation sequence from beginning word to ending word. Okay. Um, and this transformation consists of only one letter being changed at a time, and uh, each transformed word must exist in the word list that we're given. So note, begin word is not a transformed word. So um, let's look at the example. For example, we're going to be given a beginning word and an ending word, like hit and cog. Then we're going to get a dictionary word list of all these other words. The ending word will always be in the word list because that is a transformed word. The beginning word does not have to be in the word list. So how what is the shortest transformation sequence if we're changing hit one letter at a time to get to our final word cog? So we could change hit to hot because all we have to do is change the I to an O. So that would be one transformation. Hit to hot is one transformation. And then once, you know, that's our first transformation, hit to hot, we can go from hot then to dot because we change the H to a D. Um, or we could go to lot. So we could go hot to dot or hot to lot because it's just one letter. We're changing the first letter of each of these. And then from dot, you can go to dog or from lot, you can go to log. And then finally, you can go to cog or whatever from dog to uh, cog or log to, is it cog? I don't know, whatever. But you know what I mean. So this is, believe it or not, like an extremely popular interview question. It's not really called word ladder too often, but it's just very, it's a very good problem to use breadth first search on. And breadth first search is used in so many different scenarios. This is one of the main ones, like how do you know to use breadth first search? Well, when you look at the problem, if you can imagine this as a bunch of nodes on a kind of graph where like you're starting with a beginning point, you're trying to reach an ending point, you want to know how many levels or transformations. So like in breadth first search, there's levels to changing you're going to need to get to the ending point. You can look at these as nodes. You have your starting node hit. And where can you go from there? The next level is hot. And then the next level, you can go to dot or lot. And then the next level, you can go to dog or log. And then the final level, you get to cog. So it's just kind of thinking about things like when you have just like a beginning state and an ending state, you should probably just try and think of like maybe if I'm, you know, trying to find how deep or how many levels or how many transformations, like there's different words for what you're trying to find. But if you have states that you're looking from here to here and you want to find some kind of measurement of like how fast it to get there you might want to consider like depth for search or breadth for search in cases like that so yeah that's it let's just look at the notes really quick so return zero if there's no such transformation sequence all words have to be the same length uh, all words contain only lowercase alphabetic letters uh, you may assume no duplicates in the word list okay and then uh, begin word and end word are non-empty. Okay, so, and they're not the same. Okay, great. So that's actually a lot of, that's pretty uh, clarified right there. So that's great. When you do breadth for search, the way you normally do these things is you use a queue. It's like the main data structure to use breadth for doing breadth for search. And it's good because a queue is like a line. And what you do is, since it's levels of nodes that you're evaluating, you have this queue data structure, you put your initial state onto the queue, and then while you evaluate that, once you evaluate that state, you go to the next level, you put those onto the queue, and you evaluate them like level by level. That's why a queue is good because it keeps uh, structure. And you have this loop, 
you keep popping things off the queue in like a while loop. You check if the queue's not empty, you pop things up, pull things off the queue, and then you uh, evaluate and add more things on. That's kind of how it works until your evaluations are done and you find your ending state. I guess the main thing is that this there's a lot going on in this problem. They've switched the function signature from what it used to be. It used to be a set. We're going to want a set anyway because we want to check if the... We're going to be wanting to check that the words we're evaluating when we're looking at the levels are in the set and or in the word list. And if you're checking in a word list, in a list in Java, the time complexity is a lot worse than a set. So I don't know why they changed it. We're just going to recreate that anyway. So let's just make a hash set of strings. We're just going to say set is equal to new hash set. And we'll just do for string word in word list just to pet put all of those onto the set. So we'll do set.add word. And then at the end, we can just check right away. If set doesn't contain the ending word, then that means the ending state isn't even pop in the word list that we're given. Like it wouldn't, that would mean that cog wouldn't be in here. So they want us to return zero if there's no transformation sequence. So let's just do that really quick. Let's just return zero there. And now we're pretty much ready to go. We have everything we need. Let's first just set up our queue. So we'll say a queue of strings. Uh, you could just call it queue. That's how it's all, that's often what people call them in breadth for search. And then we'll offer queue.offer our initial state, which will be begin word in this situation. Now we'll also declare a level to one to start us off. Um, because we're gonna be incrementing our level as we put things onto this queue and do our breadth first search. So let's just say, now while queue is not empty, this is where we actually uh, do our breadth first search. And since we're at the end of each loop, we're just gonna be incrementing the level anyway. That's just how it usually works. Uh, also, if we are unsuccessful in finding our ending state, we're gonna be checking for our ending state within the breadth first search. We'll just return zero on the outside of the loop as well. So what's gonna go on within the loop, the main loop of our breadth first search? Uh, well, what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're going to want to pop the, we're gonna to wanna to look at a, the previous word. So maybe like hit, right, in the first part of it. And we're going to look at the possible changes that are one letter away the words that are one letter away, check if those are in our word list. And if they are, we're going to put those onto the queue to evaluate next and increment our you know level because we're finding the next level. Like that's how we're going to find the next level to our breadth for a search. We're going to take like our word like hit and we're going to change the letter in the first position, the second position, the third position and try every letter from A to Z. And if that word, while we're checking, exists in the word list, then we would have found a letter that is one, uh, a word that is one letter away, and that would be a valid transformation. So we'll take that word, add it onto the queue to evaluate next. And when we find the word that is one letter away, we're also going to wanna check if that is the end word. And if it is, we can just return level plus one because we're, it's the next one that's gonna be on the queue. So we'll just return that the depth we found it. So um, that's pretty much the strategy here. So let's just implement it really quick. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab the size of our queue. So size is going to be equal to queue.size. We're going to have an outer loop that loop, not an outer loop, an inner loop that loops up to size and it pulls off all of the strings. So we'll say, uh, word, current word, or whatever you want to call it, um, queue.pull. That just pops it off the queue. That's the next thing we're evaluating right now. Then since uh, Java strings aren't um, mutatable, like we cannot, what I think it's called immutable, we cannot just change the characters. We can't directly change the characters. I think maybe in Python you can. So we're gonna have to convert it to a char array. So we'll just say uh, word chars or whatever you wanna call it is equal to current word dot two char array. Cause that in that case, we can actually just modify the char array uh, index indices for to change the characters. So now we have to add another inner loop to loop up to um, word chars dot length. I++, uh, plus plus, J++, plus plus, sorry. And then what's happening here is we're looping through the individual characters. So like, for example, in hit, 
we're looping through the first position, the second position, and the third position in this loop right here. And what we're going to want to do is we want to get the original character. So we'll say, okay, original, original char is equal to word chars of J. So at first that would be H, then I, then T. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to loop through the letters in the alphabet. So we could say char C is equal to A, um, C is less than Z, uh, lexicographically, lexicographically or whatever the hell, and uh, C++. This will just in, in, uh, increment the ASCII values to go from A to Z in the alphabet. You could also just make a string for the alphabet, like A through Z, and then just loop through the alphabet string. And we're going to want to try out every character in the alphabet at each position in the word so that we can check if we find the ending word or if we find a transformation. So first thing we could do is we could just check if the um, word chars of J is equal to the current character because in that case we can just continue our loop because it's the same character that's not a transformation and that's the word we're already evaluating. If that's not the case, then we can just put uh, word chars of J, so the current position in the array, we can just set it to the character. So this will try out all the other characters. I do these on, I do, that's why I use OBS to do these because the camera dies. All right, so at this point we are change, actually changing each character of each position of the string. So we can convert this now from an array to a string. So we could sit, call it whatever you want. Um, so we could just call it maybe new word is equal to word chars or I think you can do string dot value of word chars. So the char array. Now we have our new word that we're trying out with all these different characters and we could say, okay, if new word dot equals uh, end word, then we can just return level plus one because we found the ending word. Otherwise, if unfortunately we don't find the ending word, well, maybe we found a transformation, so we could at least check that. And to check that, we can just say, okay, well, if the word list, or actually we use the set for constant time, sorry, that's the whole point. Uh, if the set contains the new word, then that's a transformation because we only change one letter. So in that case, what we can do is we can just add it because we found our next transformation, our next level to the queue. We can just add it onto the queue and we can just remove it from the sets. Set dot remove from the set so we don't get duplicates. And uh, that should be it. I think after the loop, we would just want to say um, new, the the word chars array, we, we could just set it back to the... Um, of j is equal to the original char so we don't screw anything up and this should be the answer like this is just a breath first search it gets really messy and i'm going to talk about this this problem being like annoying it says arrays out of it says array out of bounds exception probably because we have to have this be j not i that makes no sense hey we got it we got it all right sweet so that was it. Um, there is way more to this problem than just that. This is a messy solution. It's actually probably one of the worst solutions. This is a regular BFS. I think that you, in an interview, this is fine. Like this might be the easiest version of this and it's messy as crap. Like it's fine if you do this in an interview, I'm sure like they wouldn't be upset with this. But if we look at the solution, like I said, you could look at this as like graph nodes. So one thing they like to do to avoid like looping through all the characters of the alphabet and changing all this stuff and doing all that crap, because that is time consuming, is they like to do pre-processing, which saves time um, and kind of involves like, uh, I don't know, you could read into this a little more. This is probably the better way to do it. Intermediate state is what they call it. Like this is what it looks like here. Um, but that's really like not the main thing i guess the main thing that can be improved upon is this bi-directional breadth first search and basically since you know the starting state and you know the ending state you can actually call two breadth first searches at the same time one from the beginning state looking towards the ending state one from the ending state looking towards the beginning state and since it's level by level they'll be, both be running at the same time and they'll meet in the middle, basically. So if I have the ending word, you have the beginning word, these searches both get 
you know, if there's tons of levels, like they both take place at the same time and they'll meet somewhere in the middle. And uh, then you just add the height that it took, the level, the uh, depth it took to get from the beginning state to the ending state and the ending state to the beginning state from both breadth first searches. And that would be the answer. I didn't implement that here. Um, it's actually not that much worse than this solution. I'm just saying there's like a lot of stuff and I just wanted to show the basic version of it. That's probably the easiest to understand for anyone that, you know, just wants to know how to do it if that comes up in an interview. But there's the pre-processing step you can do and there's also this two-ended um, BFS. I think it looks a lot messier because they switched. Like originally this was the method signature, but they switched it to a list now. So what you had here is you had a beginning set and ending set and you kind of kept track. You had two different, two, you have uh, extra data structure to handle the simultaneous breadth first searches from both sides. And uh, yeah, it's really not that bad. This one is the not pre-processing, but I don't want this video to go on forever. Let me know what you guys think about having higher quality videos, like with the camera quality. Or if you like the rawness of me making all the mistakes on just OBS plainly and if you don't care that much. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you. And uh, yeah, that's it. I'll see you in the next Leak Code video. Good luck.